Greetings, I'm Dermot Hussey. Welcome to the YouTube channel of Riffin Radio, which is in support of our celebrity podcast. Today, we talk about poet and activist, Linton Quasey Johnson. When did you first discover Linton Quasey Johnson? I believe the first time I was introduced to Quasi's music, or rather his poetry, was uh, on the printed page, a volume of Dread, Beat and Blood, which I believe was out in 1975. But to actually connect with his poetry, that was the album that followed on Virgin Records, Dread, Beat and Blood. How did you feel when you first heard his poetry? Oh, his poetry was a revelation because it came at you from a variety of angles. You had a brother who spoke in a kind of deadpan delivery. His content was, was very serious. He was dealing with issues that concerned the blacks in Britain of which he was a member of that community. And then the connection between the spoken word and the musical backing of which Dennis Bovell provided him was an extraordinary combination. And in fact, the beginning of dub poetry, which he helped to pioneer. How did your friendship develop? I think from the first time I interviewed him in Jamaica, we became fast friends. Uh, because we had a lot in common. Linton was not only a poet, he was a political activist. He also wrote a lot about reggae music in various journals and papers in the United States. I mean, sorry, in, in Europe, in Britain. And he also was a record producer because he had a label, LKJ Records, produced poets like Gene Binter Breeze, uh, you know, and he was also instrumental in helping another Jamaican poet, Mikey Smith, to come over to the UK for a series of appearances. What would you say that is very unique about Linton Quaysal Johnson? His intellect, the combination of the poetry and the themes that he represented in the poetry. I mean, he was a poet, but he was also a political activist and his poetry was used in that cause. What would you tell this younger generation that are not familiar with LKJ? I think every generation suffers from a kind of cultural lag. There are lots of things that they miss and, you know, sometimes you have to repoint them or refocus them on something worthwhile discovering as in the case of Linton, a serious poet whose poetry resonated on the page, but also when it became a spoken performance poetry. It was like a catalyst and it also represented the struggle of his people in Britain because all the serious issues that emerged during Maggie Thatcher's government he challenged it with his poetry, with his verse. So would you say that his poetry would be relevant today in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement? Oh yes, because you know, it might be a different a social context, Britain is against the US, but the basic issue of dealing with racism, key. Thank you so much.